I get many worried questions about, from, from people outside of Hungary, like what's, what's really happening in Hungary? Is it like uh, turning to a dictatorship uh, in the middle of the European Union? And uh, what I can answer to those, to those questions is not yet. So Hungary is not a dictatorship yet. Uh, the best uh, term, how, what we, how we can, uh, you know, uh, uh, describe the situation in Hungary or describe the system which exists now in Hungary is uh, 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 an informational autocracy. That was the best term I, I ever heard about, uh, about this system. So uh, autocrats of today, they don't really need uh, uh, open repression. Uh, they don't need tanks, they don't really need uh, uh, torture rooms. What they need is a very effective propaganda machine that makes people believe that they are the competent leaders of our countries. And what they also need is to restrict uh, uh, freedom of association, so to, to restrict civil society and uh, silence those voices that are uh, criticizing the government. Um, and in Hungary, in my country, uh, the attack against uh, civil society started in uh, 2014 uh, when the government scapegoated those NGOs, those civil society organizations that uh, received funding from foreign uh, donors and uh, why, why we are scapegoated and why we are in the spotlight because uh, actually receiving money from international donors means that you are independent from the government. The government has no control over you. So when you are receiving uh, the money from international donors, you are free to, s to criticize the government. And that's why we are dangerous for those uh, with power and those with privileges. Uh, and uh, my organization advocates for the human rights of uh, um, uh, drug users, sex workers, and people living with HIV AIDS. Uh, uh, and uh, those organizations who receive uh, funding from uh, international donors, uh, now they are required to uh, register uh, in a government registry. Uh, the law was adopted in 2017, uh, and uh, this law uh, uh, requires us to register as foreign-funded NGOs, uh, also to label every publication as foreign-funded uh, uh, NGO uh, and uh, also uh, uh, also if you if you if you violate these rules then uh, then you will you, you first instance you will pay a fine and second instance uh, the court can abol abolish the uh, NGO and um, uh, apart from this legislation uh, the government is uh, pursuing a kind of hate propaganda in the, in the Hungarian media against uh, NGOs, especially funded by George Soros. Uh, maybe some of you have seen pictures of uh, how George Soros was, uh, uh, you know, highlighted in big billboard campaigns all over Hungary as the enemy of the Hungarian people, and uh, he, he was made a kind of public enemy number one uh, in Hungary. So the, the government spent uh, huge uh, money uh, from public resources to, uh, to advertise uh, or, or campaign against uh, the George Soros and us NGOs who are supported by him. And the latest, uh, uh, latest uh, round of uh, uh, kind of legislative reforms of the government was the, the so-called Stop Soros Law, which was adopted this year. Uh, uh, very cynically, this law was adopted on the International Refugee Day, uh, and this uh, uh, law actually criminali criminalizes helping to refugees and migrants, uh, and criminalizes those NGOs who are helping migrants and refugees. Um, there is a huge uh, uh, xenophobia, xenophobic campaign against migrants and refugees in my country, which is, of course, not really because we have so big problems uh, of migration, because the number of uh, refugees and migrants coming to Hungary is very small, but still uh, it's, uh, it's, it's used for fear-mongering in Hungary. And um, uh, uh, how it affects our work in the field of harm reduction and uh, HIV prevention in Hungary. So my government uh, uh, adopted a very uh, repressive uh, national drug strategy in uh, 2013, and this drug strategy aims to make Hungary drug-free, uh, and uh, it condemns uh, harm reduction actually, or uh, it does not support harm reduction, and uh, uh, consequently the budget for all harm reduction programs was cut, and uh, 
there were some political attacks against needle and syringe programs especially. Uh, in Budapest there were six uh, needle and syringe programs uh, funded by the national government and uh, in 2014 uh, the, go the government ruling party organized demonstrations against the needle exchange programs and uh, uh, they uh, claimed that the needle and syringe programs are responsible for attracting drug users to the uh, neighborhood. And uh, they forced this, uh, the, the two largest needle and syringe programs to close down. So uh, these two largest programs uh, distributed 55% uh, of clean needles in, 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 the, in the country. After closing them down, uh, the access to clean needles is, uh, is, is extremely low. So it's uh, less than uh, 30 needles per year per injecting drug users, which is much lower than recommended by international organizations. Uh, now, there is a, th these laws and these in, uh, interventions also have a chilling effect on uh, civil society. So those NGOs who receive funding from uh, international donors uh, they have difficulty, you know, to cooperate with any kind of local authorities or institutions. So uh, the, uh, everybody is afraid to ha to build any kind of partnership with those NGOs. So apart from the legal consequences, we have this chilling effect, uh, and uh, that's also, you know, affecting uh, the lives of people who, who are living with HIV. Uh, I always used to say that uh, it's not we activists who are really in danger in Hungary, but those people we represent because, you know, uh, most of the activists, they speak foreign languages, they can move from the country if they really need to, but those people we represent, they don't have any uh, opportunity to leave. They will be uh, imprisoned, uh, criminalized. Uh, the drug laws were uh, restricted in Hungary, so now more people going to going to prison because of uh, simple possession of uh, 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 drugs. Um, maybe something about what works and what does not work in advocacy in this uh, repressive environment. So uh, uh, there are a few NGOs who resist to this uh, uh, new law, the anti soros law and the anti-NGO law. Uh, uh, my NGO with uh, nine or eight other NGOs, we refuse to register as foreign agents uh, in this registry. And we uh, challenge this law at the Constitutional Court and also at the European uh, Human Rights Court. So we have the benefit of being a member of the European Union and uh, um, uh, we can use some of the mechanisms uh, that this provides and we use all these uh, channels we can use in legal channels uh, uh, to challenge this uh, law. And also we uh, organize uh, mass media campaigns and uh, we organize mass demonstrations uh, against uh, these laws. Uh, civil society organizations keep together now. So that, that, the, apart from this chilling effect, actually, uh, uh, this current situation also had this, uh, 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 this uh, effect or consequence that uh, some of the NGOs are now cooperating better. Those NGOs who are you know, the victims of this repression, now they come together and they uh, organize much, much, there are much more cooperation in, in civil society than it was before. Uh, so it's kind of unintended consequence of, the, of, the, of this law. And um, uh, I, I also think that in this repress, when, when you work in this uh, kind of environment, when you are scapegoated, when you are made a public enemy, you have to, reduce your ambition. So uh, I think uh, we, have, we have to be less uh, ambitious with our goals. So we, we should proceed with small steps uh, and also uh, kind of protect those, uh, as, as one Hungarian philosopher, Istvan Bibo said, small circles of liberty exist in society. And we have to protect those small circles of liberty, uh, which is actually uh, uh, civil society itself. Uh, and uh, we, we, I mean, we, we, we should be less ambitious with, with the goals. And um, also, I think um, uh, it's important to uh, change the way how we are uh, uh, thinking uh, and we are perceiving uh, advocacy. So, uh, uh, you know, the traditional way of advocacy in, in, in developed democracies is that you present the evidence and you present the facts to the decision makers and then you expect that the decision makers will uh, act accordingly, according to the evidence. But what we see is that this is, it doesn't work anymore. So, uh, and, and I think it's also a, a kind of, uh, 
uh, it's something which was missed by civil society before, that we have to work much more on talking to the men on the street. Have, we have to convince people on the street. We have to address their prejudices. Uh, we, we have to be way, way less complex in our communication. We have to keep it to simple messages and uh, reach out to, uh, to, uh, to, to people. And uh, now what is on our advantage is that uh, all NGOs can be their own media. My NGO, for example, specialized on producing online videos. And these online videos can uh, reach out uh, many people through, the, through social media and uh, can have a powerful effect. Uh, what's also impor important here is uh, we have to uh, highlight uh, human stories instead of just you know, uh, presenting the facts and the evidence, because I think storytelling is uh, much more effective in, uh, in, in our advocacy. Just to conclude, because I have very limited time, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, it's also important to know, because I, f I, see at, I feel at this conference that many of us, many of our activists now uh, feel a bit depressed and they are like losing face in what they are doing, questioning the meaning of the work, what they are doing. Uh, but it's also important to note that uh, why we are under attack and why we are uh, scapegoated by this uh, illiberal autocrats is because we did something good, because we are really dangerous for uh, those with power and those uh, with privileges. We are really, you know, threatening their privileges. So we are doing something good. And I think it's important to uh, keep, keep that in mind when we are doing our everyday work, that uh, it's, it's, we are exactly uh, now in the spotlight because we are doing something good. And we should not stop that. Uh, we should have always improve what we are doing, but we, sh we, we should not stop that. And it's also a message to international donors, of course, that please don't retreat, but please support uh, NGOs and activist community activists who are working in uh, this, uh, these environments. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm.